Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here, and I want to talk to you about plastic <laughs> and how you can be more uh, plastic avoidant. You can't be plastic free, unfortunately, just not even possible, but how you can get less of it. So briefly, I want to talk about why you'd want to. You probably know that, but briefly, plastic compounds are known endocrine disruptors, meaning they goof up your delicate, super important hormones. And this is a problem for disease risk, for fertility, for male health, male hormone production. You know, in terms of natural fertility, there's been data on both genders. It's, it's scary both ways, but the data on men has been really scary. So they've shown that sperm counts, like active healthy sperm counts in college age men today versus when I was little, you know, 40 years ago, uh, they're down by more than half. And there's been a clear progression from the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. It's a clear trend. Honestly, if the trend continues unabated within a couple of decades, you know, I just talked to a good friend yesterday who has an infertility clinic, uh, uh, Arizona Advanced Fertility Center. That may be the only way to go. There may be more, no more normal babies if the trend keeps going. No kidding, it's that freaky. So you want to really watch your plastic exposure. So male infertility, uh, also gynecomastia, which is guys getting boobs. You know, huge problem from plastic exposure. And precocious puberty. So when I started practicing 20 years ago, not that long ago in the historical context, they defined precocious puberty as children, adolescents going into puberty before age nine. You know, that's a concern. It's a stress for a little child to suddenly be menstruating or developing secondary adult characteristics like growing boobs or getting pubic hair. That's an awkward thing for a small child. But in the last decade, they've had to redefine that age threshold because it's now so common. Now the new definition is seven years of age because eight and nine years of age is not that unusual anymore. And that's been advancing ever since the last turn of the last century. It used to be women were 16 or almost 17 before they had the first period. Now 13 is completely the norm and that's getting younger and younger all the time. So all big changes. And I couldn't honestly say it's solely because of plastic, but that is one of the stronger theories, one of the stronger theories amongst researchers. So what are some of the big chemicals? You know, BPA, uh, bisphenol A, has gotten a lot of attention, rightfully so. But the pitfall is that now things are saying they're BPA free. Guess what? <laughs> they're using bisphenol S instead of bisphenol A. And how do you know which products have bisphenol S? Well, you don't. There's no labeling requirements, no labeling guidelines. And we have data, limited data, but some data suggesting that bisphenol S is just as dangerous as bisphenol A. And if we have further studies, it may be confirmed. <clears throat> but for the time being, it doesn't seem rational to assume that bisphenol S is safer than bisphenol A. We also want to think about other compounds like phthalates found in plastic. This is a big thing, and this is a big remnant of that. These build up, and these are relevant to just plastic odors and plastic fragrances. So the main sources, um, a lot of these are obvious. We're thinking about like the styrofoam containers, which gives off styrene, uh, especially with heat, with heat. The last thing you want to do is have a hot cup of liquid from a styrofoam container. There's a slick of oily stuff on the top. That's pure styrene. That's one of the strongest carcinogens documented. So totally avoid that. One big source also just our food wrapping is a large one. We do see these compounds in some foods and farm raised seafood sadly is one of the richer sources of that. I should be precise, farm raised fish is one of the richer sources of that. Not true for farm raised mollusks or shellfish. But then also we think about just wrapping of food and food containers. You know, there was a, a young gal that did a study showing that heating foods with plastic wrap in any way will release high amounts of, of polystyrene as well. So don't heat in plastic, try not to store in plastic. The more fat a food has, the more of a problem this becomes because these plastic compounds are fat soluble. So storing oils or storing fattier types of food, definitely do avoid plastic. Now there's some sources of plastic that you may not think about that you're being exposed to, but may not be quite as obvious. One of the biggest ones is, is receipts from cash registers. So these, these are printed with compounds that emit high amounts of phthalates. This is a, a, funny, a funny term, pH, TH, 
phthalates. So it's a silent pH. <laughs> uh, hold on, I've got to ask a quick question. Hey, what was the pterodactyl joke again? Uh, why can't you hear pterodactyl? Come here, come here. Why don't you tell this one? Okay, okay. I just speak up and speak to the camera. Okay. Come okay. here, speak to the camera. I've got a helper here with me who's going to assist. Here's the mic, so come over on this side. Okay. Okay. So tell the story about the... Okay. Uh, how come you can't hear a pterodactyl when it pees? Why can you not hear a pterodactyl when it pees? Because the pee is silent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, cameo appearance here. <laughs> so yeah, phthalates, also a silent pee, like pterodactyl. But a ton of that from cash register receipts. So the best habit is have them either not give you the receipts for the top habit or put it in the bag and then just don't handle that when you're unloading the bag. Good to avoid. Many canned foods, the linings of those. Better canned foods will talk about being BPA free. We've got the dang BPS question. I, I wish that wasn't the case, but now that is a consideration. Children's toys, notorious for plastic sources. Of course, water bottles, uh, canned soda, canned beer. Here's a tough one, um, toothbrushes. <laughs> a lot from toothbrushes. There are some better ones now that will use nylon at least, which is probably a safer version, or animal hair products instead. Vinyl purses, vinyl shoes, uh, other versions of vinyl that are against the, cl the clothes, or some vinyl clothes that were out in the past, and those things you'll absorb quite a bit from. So how do you work around this? They've got some nice versions of now break-proof glass to where it's got rubber liners around it. Rubber is a harmless material. Glass is. Silicon is harmless. Stainless steel is harmless. And there's good containers for food products from all these things. It's actually hard to find containers that are like food storage containers that don't have at least plastic lids. That's really hard to find. So there are a couple out there that are all steel. The drawback is you can't see what's in them. So if it's not contacting the lid, that's helpful, but don't store them upside down and don't heat with the lid on them. Other ideas, uh, water. There are now good versions of water cooler containers you can get that are glass-based. And of course, reusable grocery bags. And there's more silicon storage containers and silicon baking products and silicon um, utensils that are great to use. Another source would be straws, you know, avoiding plastic straws. They do make good straws out of maltodextrin, which is just a food carbohydrate, and great ones out of glass and steel as well. Glass are nice. They shatter when you drop them. <laughs> steel is good. It does transmit temperature, so it's really cold or really hot. And then when you're out and about, always have a beverage container with you. Always have a water bottle in your car, a glass or a stainless steel one with. And also, you can take foods instead of, aluminum, instead of plastic wrap, use aluminum foil, use parchment paper. And if you're going to have leftovers from dining out, it's probably worth having a container with you when you go. So you've got something better to put that in. Because the styrofoam in takeout containers, again, is awful. So avoid it. If you use it, don't heat it. So lots of good options. And really, this list of plastic substitutes is exploding. There is no shortage of products available now to help you live with less plastic. And any way you can cut down on that is worth doing so. Dr. Christensen here. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.